Hello, welcome to lesson nine of the Practical OSPF series. In this lesson, we're going to explore the five main types of LSAs that exist in OSPF. But wait a minute, didn't we already have a lesson nine? Well, yeah, let me explain. Originally, lessons nine, 10, and 11 were deep dive lessons on OSPF LSAs. But in hindsight, when thinking about this series, I realized that might have been going too deep too quick. Plus, some of you may not need to know LSAs quite to that depth. So I wanted to provide a lesson that would serve as a gentler introduction to OSPF LSAs to cover the main points that everybody needs to know to understand OSPF. For each of the LSAs that we're about to discuss, know that if you want to go deeper, you can watch what will now be lessons 10, 11, and 12 in this series. With that said, let's get into the content for this lesson. This is the topology that we'll be using in this lesson. We have three areas, area 44, area 55, and area zero. And then we have router two and router three serving as our area border routers or our ABRs. We also have router four, router one, and router five as internal routers in each of these areas. But for each of these, consider them as representing any amount of internal routers in the respective area. The first LSA that we're gonna talk about is a type one LSA. Type one LSAs are known as router LSAs, and they'll be sent by every single OSPF router and it's going to identify the router and the links that that router is attached to. Inside, the type 1 LSA is going to include information about the link to include the IP network, the subnet mask, and the cost for each router to access their link. These type 1 LSAs will be used by the other routers in the area to rebuild a topology map of the local area. Each router is going to send a single type 1 LSA, and it's going to be confined to the area in which it was originated meaning the type 1 LSAs that router 4 might send will not actually make their way into area 0 or area 55. Which brings us to type 2 LSAs. Type 2 LSAs are known as network LSAs, and those are going to be sent by any designated router, but only if multiple OSPF routers are connected to the same multi-access link. Just like type 1 LSAs, type 2 LSAs are also going to be confined to the local area, which means the type 2 LSAs that exist in area 0 will not make their way into area 44 or area 55. Now, the type 1 and type 2 LSAs are actually pretty significant, so I actually want to explore them a little bit further. And to do that, we're going to focus on area 0 for a minute. If the routers in area 0 were connected as such, and OSPF was configured on router 1, router 1 would start sending out a single type 1 LSA, including the IP address and subnet of the links that router 1 is connected to. Then, if router 2 and router 3 were then configured with OSPF, they would also start sending out a type 1 LSA, and router 1 would update its type 1 LSA, indicating that it now has new neighbors on the links it's already attached to. The type 1 LSA sent by router 2 and router 3 would include the IP address information of the links that they are attached to, and the fact that they are now neighbors with router 1 on that link. If router 3 was then connected to another network segment hosting a bunch of clients, Router 3 would simply update its original type 1 LSA with the IP address and subnet mask related to that particular network segment. Notice each of these routers are only sending out a single type 1 LSA, and that type 1 LSA is going to include all the information about all the links that the router is attached to. What about type 2 LSAs? Well, as we just mentioned, type 2 LSAs are only going to be sent when multiple routers are connected to the same multi-access link. So if we connect router 2 to a multi-access link, instead of all of these routers sharing the same IP address and subnet mask information about that link, what happens is all those routers will elect a designated router, and that designated router will send out a single type 2 LSA, which includes the information related to this multi-access segment. Then all of these other routers are also going to send out a single type 1 LSA, and that type 1 LSA will indicate that it is connected to a multi-access segment and the IP address information of that segment is included in router 9's, the DR's type 2 LSA. So that's the rundown on type 1 and type 2 LSAs. In total, in area 0, if this was the topology, we would have a total of 7 LSAs. We would have 6 type 1 LSAs, one sent by every single router in the topology. We have router 1, router 2, and router 3, and then router 7, 8, and 9 over here. And then we would also have a single type 2 LSA, sent by the only DR in this topology that is also connected to other OSBF routers on the same multi-axis link. So that's as far as we're gonna go in this lesson on type one and type two LSAs. 
If you want to go further, check out Lesson 10, where we took a deep dive into Type 1 and Type 2 LSAs. The main thing for this lesson is understanding the contents of Type 1 and Type 2 LSAs and understanding that they are confined to the area in which they have been generated. So the Type 1 and 2 LSAs, which describe Area 0, will not make their way into Area 44 and Area 55. With that said, we can now talk about Type 3 LSAs. Type 3 LSAs are known as Summary LSAs, and they're going to contain the IP networks from foreign areas. They're going to be sent by the ABRs, Router 2 and Router 3 in our topology, and they're going to summarize the information that was existing in the Type 1 and Type 2 LSAs from each area. For example, Router 2 is going to summarize all the information contained in the Type 1 and Type 2 LSAs that exist in Area 44, and it's going to send that into Area 0 as Type 3 LSAs. But Type 3 LSAs don't just summarize Type 1 and Type 2 LSAs. They also summarize other Type 3 LSAs. For example, Router 3 is going to share the information learned from the Type 1, Type 2, and Type 3 LSAs that exist in Area 0 and send that into Area 55. This Type 3 summarization is also going to happen in both directions, meaning Router 3 is also going to take the information learned from the Type 1 and 2 LSAs in Area 55 and summarize them as Type 3 LSAs into Area 0. And in the same way, Router 2 is going to take the information learned from the Type 1, Type 2, and Type 3 LSAs that exist in Area 0 and summarize those into Area 44 as Type 3 LSAs. By default, each Type 3 LSA is going to include a single IP subnet. Let me explain what I mean by that. Let's just say that the Type 1 and 2 LSAs in Area 44 accounted for 10 IP subnets, and the Type 1 and 2 LSAs in Area 0 accounted for 20, and the Type 1 and 2s in Area 55 accounted for 40. What that means is that when Router 2 is summarizing these Type 1 and Type 2 LSAs, it's going to be sending all 10 of those subnets as 10 different Type 3 LSAs into Area 0. Router 3, to summarize the 10 Type 3 LSAs that exist in Area 0, and the 20 IP subnets that exist in the Type 1 and 2 LSAs in Area 0 will be sending 30 Type 3 LSAs into Area 55. And then in the other direction, Router 3 will be sending 40 Type 3 LSAs, accounting for each of the IP subnets inside the Type 1 and Type 2 LSAs in Area 55. And then of course, Router 2 will be summarizing the 20 subnets in the Type 1 and 2 LSAs and the 40 Type 3 LSAs by sending 60 Type 3 LSAs into Area 44. So that's what I mean by a single Type 3 LSA is going to include information for a single IP subnet. Now, of course, I did say by default. These Type 3 LSAs actually create the perfect opportunity for IP summarization. We'll be getting into IP summarization later on in this series, but I do want to quickly mention that this is a good place to do summarization. For example, if all of the IP subnets in Area 0 and Area 55 happen to fall into the same slash 16, we can tell Router 2 to not send 60 Type 3 LSAs, but instead send a single Type 3 LSAs reflecting that slash 16. We'll be getting into more details about summarization later on in this series. For now, I just wanted to mention that this was one location you could do IP summarization within OSPF. And with that said, we actually conclude everything we wanted to mention about Type 3 LSAs. Now, so far, we've talked about Type 1 and Type 2 and Type 3 LSAs. And notice that every single route within an OSPF domain can be learned using only Type 1, Type 2, and Type 3 LSAs. The Type 1 and 2 LSAs will teach every area everything they need to know about within their own area. These will create what's known as intra-area routes. And then the Type 3 LSAs will teach every area about the IP subnets that exist in other areas. These are known as inter-area routes. But what about Type 4 and Type 5 LSAs? Well, those will only exist if you have an ASBR that is redistributing foreign networks into OSPF. That's where the Type 4 and Type 5 LSAs come into play. These type of routes are known as external routes, and they're going to include information about IP subnets that exist outside of the OSPF domain. And that's what we're going to talk about next. We're going to have Router 6 redistribute the 9.9.9.0 slash 24 network into area 44. And it's going to do that using a type 5 LSA. Type 5 LSAs are known as external LSAs, and they contain a single IP subnet that has been redistributed into OSPF. 
Now, it doesn't matter what the source is of that redistribution. Anything that an ASBR redistributes into OSPF will show up as a type 5 LSA. These type 5 LSAs are going to be sent by the ASBRs, in our example, router 6, and they're going to include something like this. To reach the network which has been redistributed into OSPF, use the ASBR router 6. The type 5 LSAs are then going to be forwarded unchanged throughout the OSPF domain, meaning this exact same type 5 LSA will also appear in area 0 and will also appear in area 55. Now, of course, they are going to be forwarded by the ABRs since that's the only link between the different areas, but they are going to be forwarded unchanged, which means inside area 0, a type 5 LSA is going to exist that says to reach the 9s network, use router 6. But there's a problem there. Area 0 does not know who router 6 is. Remember, router 6 introduced itself into area 44 using a type 1 LSA, but recall that type 1 LSAs do not cross area boundaries, which means there is no type 1 LSA introducing router 6 to the routers in area 0, which means even though Area 0 does have that LSA that says to reach the 9s network, use router 6. The routers in Area 0 do not know how to reach router 6. That's where the Type 4 LSA comes into play. Type 4 LSAs are known as ASBR Summary LSAs, and they include instructions on how to reach an ASBR in a foreign area. They're going to be sent by the ABR whenever an ASBR exists in a foreign area. In our topology, Router 2, an ABR, is going to send a Type 4 LSA, which is going to provide instructions for Area 0 to reach the ASBR, Router 6. The Type 4 LSA is effectively going to say, to reach Router 6, the ASBR, use Router 2, the ABR. That is how the routers in Area 0 will be able to reach the network that was redistributed into OSPF. In the same way, Router 3, who sent this Type 5 LSA, knows that the routers in Area 55 do not know who Router 6 is. So Router 3 will also include a Type 4 LSA as a helper LSA for this Type 5 LSA. And in Router 3's case, the Type 4 LSA is going to say, to reach the ASBR Router 6, use the ABR Router 3. So in the end, the routers in Area 55 will know that to reach the foreign redistributed network, they have to use the ASBR router 6, and that they'll know how to reach router 6 by using router 3. So any traffic from area 55 that needs to get to the redistributed network will be sent to router 3. Router 3 will know that to reach the ASBR, router 3 should use router 2, and so router 3 will pass that on to router 2. And router 2, who knows where router 6 is because of router 6's type 1 LSA, will forward the packet to router 6, will then forward it into the foreign autonomous system. And that actually concludes everything we wanted to talk about regarding type 4 and type 5 LSAs. Once again, if you want to go deeper on type 4 and type 5 LSAs, go ahead and check out lesson 12 in this series where we did a deep dive on type 4 and type 5 LSAs. With that said, we actually conclude everything we wanted to cover in this lesson about type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, and type 5 LSAs. And that wraps up everything we wanted to communicate to you about OSPF LSAs. The main takeaways from this lesson are on your screen right now. And if you want more details and a demonstration on each of these LSAs, go and check out what is now lessons 10, 11, and 12 in the series. Following that, in lesson 13, we'll be covering another major confusion topic in OSPF, and that is network types. But don't worry, we'll be giving it the practical networking treatment. As always, if you enjoyed this lesson, please help me out with the YouTube algorithm by liking, commenting, and subscribing. And of course, the best way to show your appreciation is to share this video with your peers. Thank you for watching this lesson, and we'll see you in the next one.